I mean, if you think about it, the 1981 team hit 350 as a team. Uh, three of the starting players batted more than 400. The three main starting pitchers all had ERAs below three. The closer had an ERA below two. And if you, you ever saw our guys take infield practice, you'd understand how good a defense we played. So if you're going to beat the 1981 Mercer team, you got to play your best game. Was, we just couldn't lose. It just couldn't happen. You know, when they say go around the order, you know, we went around the order <laughs> big time, one after the other. And it just continued until we went as far as we went. Losing was not an option. We came out there to show people what we could do because we knew what we could do collectively. So it was, it was a strength that was very, you couldn't calculate it. I remember the very first game that this team played um, on the way south and Dennis Johnston hit two home runs in the first inning and he hit another one that day and I was just awed. You know, I, I was not a starter. Um, it was the first college game I ever played and I, I, I was like, man, this team is really, really good. I remember one game, we got off to a bad start and they were beating us up, I don't know, seven, eight, nothing, something like that. And, uh, and they were a chirpy team. They, like, they were, they were kind of loud and obnoxious about it. And I remember Coach Miller turning around to us saying, don't say a word, just everybody go silent. And we wound up, we came back, I remember Jody Adams hit a grand slam, I think, tied the game. And we beat them, I don't know, 11-8. We didn't get excited or anything, we just got on the bus and we went home. And I think after that, we probably won 20 games in a row after that. You know, Jeff Vitale, who I backed up, um, treated me like a brother and I kind of was his competition, and you would never know that. I asked Jeff why he was taking Dave under his wing. I never seen anything like that. He said, number one, we owe it to each other as teammates to make each other better. Number two, if I make him better, he's gonna make me better. Yeah, I'd like to speak on behalf of uh, the entire team. Uh, two of our teammates have, have passed away recently. Rich Soffel, second baseman for us. He was a great guy. He came from Florida State his, uh, his freshman year, and he played with us in 81. Great ball player, um, fun guy, real fun guy. And, uh, and Frank Blackley, he was a pitcher. Um, he was a hard worker. He was a good guy. Uh, it's a shame that they're not going to be here for this ceremony because I know they would enjoy it and, uh, and we'll be thinking of them. At the time I was playing in the World Series, pressure was on Umby. You know, I had to produce in the first two games. I didn't, but fortunately, everybody else did. There was one night where a pitcher and I, Mr. Collins, had taken a walk over to a golf course uh, after a ball game to sit down and, and he just looked at me and goes, hey, um, you know, what's up? What's up with the bat? And these are moments that I just can't forget. And what that led to was one of the nights I uh, actually hit a home run and I, I couldn't believe it was a home run. But it was, and running around them base pads, I remember every step I took. I mean, thank, I mean, my, my teammates, obviously, they're, they're the only reason I was, I was there. Mr. Miller and, and uh, Coach Davis and George Matinelli, um, you know, that, that's the group that gives it structure. One shout out to Al Leister, who was the athletic director at the time. He's really the godfather of sports here at, at, at Mercer. Yeah, we worked hard that year. Uh, we had a really good team. We had a really, really good team. And uh, I'm just happy as hell for you know, all my teammates. It was very emotional because it was not long after my dad passed away. And uh, my mom broke the news to me. And she was very, very emotional. Uh, obviously proud, but uh, very emotional. She wished my dad could have been there. She stated as such. Uh, and I, I assured her that the remnants and the influence of my dad has been there and will be there tonight. Joe, your dad gave me the keys to the batting cage. That's what started my drive to, to be a hitter. He saw something in me, Mr. Ricciani. Uh, 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 and my father was like, H, <laughs> we all know. He would come to the games in his Volkswagen and it was funny, but he'd pop up and he'd just be there for us. And man, I knew, gotta produce. I don't think this team really ever thought that they could lose for the most part. Um, and I just think the team had so much confidence and so much talent and so much coaching. It just, for me, it was a steamroll. I, 
and it started from my very first game. I always tell people, uh, conventional wisdom says that uh, the whole is made up of the sum of the parts. That wasn't the case with us. Our whole was so much greater than our parts.